Good evening and welcome to For the Record. Mental health and suicide are two serious social and health issues facing the country. Many will be surprised to know that Fiji has the highest suicide rate in the South Pacific and the suicide rate is four times more than the road death toll. My guests today represent creative, dynamic, passionate young people from various youth groups and cultures committed to advocating and promoting mental health and suicide prevention and reducing stigma associated with mental illness. I'm pleased to be joined by the President and Vice President of the Youth Champs for Mental Health, Mr. Ronald Rogers and Ms. Maxine Tuila. Welcome to For the Record. So let's start by talking about Youth Champs for Mental Health. How did you start? Youth Champs for Mental Health started in 2008 and this was out of the consultation on the national formulation of a suicide prevention policy. And this was with all the government stakeholders, with all the ministries, and they were discussing ways in which they could uh, decrease the youth suicide um, rates. And suicide was, is and still, uh, it was and still is the leading cause of death amongst young people. Mm -hmm. And like you said, more than road accidents, more than drowning, mm -hmm. more than HIV needs, and it's a um, rising concern. Even I was surprised to know that uh, that, that statistic, yeah. it was more than the road death toll. So, uh, tell us about the work that you do. What, what actually does Youth Champs for Mental Health do, Maxine? Uh, so, Youth Champs for Mental Health is the only youth-led organization in the country that looks after mental health, suicide prevention, and young people. So what we usually do is most of our activities, we involve ourselves with communities, we involve ourselves with uh, schools, going out to communities and schools, uh, passing on the messages of hope, passing on the messages, uh, and building, in, building young people to be resilient in their own communities, and try and engage them and try and make them understand the importance of mental health. We're creating greater awareness, yes. is correct, Delano? So, um, the group started in 2008. So tell me about the group. How does it work? You know, do you you have an office? Uh, you um, uh, what? How how are you resourced? Um, good question. Well, um, youth Champs for Mental Health is currently the only youth group in the Pacific, working with Pacific Island countries and working with Fiji without any co-funding. So we depend uh, heavily on the government to provide the resources, to provide an office space, to provide grant funds, to work with young people in communities in various sectors, NGOs, all different types of groups. Uh, even though we're under-resourced, we've managed to cover over 300, 400 trainings, um, several national trainings, and just last week, uh, last month, we completed our regional consultation with Vanuatu, Tonga, Cook Islands, PNG, and Kiribati. So uh, uh, you, you mentioned to me earlier that you're all volunteers. Yes, we are. How, how hard is that trying to get something like this going with... Uh, uh, as a volunteer? It's quite difficult, but given the passion from these young people, some of them uh, are with lived experience, some of them come from uh, difficult backgrounds, and they found a home at Youth Champs for Mental Health. So as a little group, we're committed to creating awareness and education around mental health and social prevention in schools, communities, at different grassroots levels. Mm. So passion is a key word there. Like someone for like you, Maxine, how did you get involved? Well, I was actually mm. a social worker at Techi a student with uh, Youth Champs for Mental Health back in 2012. And since then, uh, because we I have lived experiences, I have friends that have uh, completed suicide, so I found a passion in uh, ways in which I could help other young people uh, cope with their stresses and try and uh, uh, deal with their, uh, their stresses and their difficulties. Mm. So let's talk about the issue now. How big, how bad, how, how pressing uh, is the situation of uh, mental health and suicide prevention? In, in Fiji, how would you describe it? Firstly, it's the leading cause of death amongst young yeah. people. That's something that we need to put uh, in front of everything. It's uh, that almost like can't get any worse. Or yes, get any worse. it's so happening every 36 hours, um, like you'd explained earlier. Yeah. And these are completions or even self-harm um, attempting suicide. Yeah, that, that is a shocking statistic that I didn't know about until I prepared for this show. That the police, according to the police force and uh, people in the know like you, one person in Fiji attempts a suicide every 36 hours in Fiji. That's a day and a half. Like between now and Friday, yep. generally the ratio is someone is thinking or attempting a suicide. Is that correct? It is very, I it is correct, but this is what's reported. Yeah. And if we go to the maritime areas, we go to uh, villages, the rural areas, some of these um, cases are not reported, so we can only imagine mm. how bad it could be. And mental illness is one of the leading causes of disability in the world. And um, this year for World Health Day, the, the, the theme was depression, let's talk. And we have over 10,000 
um, people living with depression here in Fiji. So are we a country that's happy? Are we a tropical mm. paradise? Well, with the, with the happiness index, we say that we are one of the top in the world. Eh? This is painting a different picture, at least uh, from within the communities. Eh? I got these other statistics in one of the articles I read. The last five years, over 600 people have committed suicide, and almost 600 people have attempted suicide. So these are two statistics, the ones that have committed and those that are, uh, you know, that have tried. How bad is it amongst young people, okay, your youth champs for mental health? Eh? I must say it's really bad. Uh, well, Youth Champs for Mental Health, we have a 100% success rate. We have not lost a single person that's walked through our doors. Right. However, the, uh, the, the problem in itself, uh, suicide, is hap it's happening every day. Yeah? And we have the stress wards and the divisional hospitals are loaded with young people. And there's only so much that the government uh, and the people can do. We need to work together, collaborative projects, in order to decrease the statistics. So it's a real problem it's a real problem and uh, you're watching for the record after the break we'll be talking more about uh, the issues and how to address the issue of uh, mental health and suicide prevention <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching for the record. Now, Lionel, um, earlier on in the first segment, we discussed about uh, resources eh? yeah. and uh, someone like you who are who like 100% staffed with volunteers. So what kind of resources would a group like you, uh, like yours, uh, Youth Champs for Mental Health, be looking at? Like every organization, we need funding. Mm. Funding for the sustainability of the program, for the retention of volunteers, and also to ha enable us to do all our projects and programs in the communities. Eh? Because we visit a lot of communities, some communities provide the resources and we just provide our capacity. Um, whereas most other communities ask if we can initiate trainings and programs and we sometimes don't have the money to do all those things. Mm. Uh, we must realize that we are a very small group of people with very limited resources. And um, sometimes because of the limited human resources, there's burnout from the members. Eh? Yeah, and so we're dealing with a lot of emotional yes. stress yep. and feelings. Eh? Yep. You, um, uh, apart from the resources, you, you mentioned that uh, you have a 100% success rate of yes. people walking through the door. What happens to someone when they walk through your door, when they come to you to look for help? Uh, we get them to contact us first through social media, yeah. through our Facebook page. Is and that the main way you get contacted? Most of the time, yes. Yeah. So we build up um, the trust through Facebook messages, uh, through social media, and then we get them to come down if we feel that they're uh, at a greater risk to themselves then we provide an enabling safe space where they're able to talk about their problems, talk about their issues. We work on a safety plan for them. And if we feel that uh, the problem is too big, that they need a more professional counsel or psychotherapist, we have our referral systems into the other mental health Yeah, because that's what I wanted to ask, uh, Maxine, maybe you would like to answer this. You are volunteers, so what expertise do you guys have in dealing with people with uh, mental health issues? Well, for us at Youth Champs, as Lionel have mentioned earlier, is that we've lived uh, experiences on, and also we have uh, families or friends that have uh, gone through uh, mental health difficulties. And also we are trained with uh, psycho psychosocial first aid, which is with uh, Selina Kurleda. Yep. Selina Kurleda, and also we have um, administered other psychosocial support that we've... Um, mm. Is there a need for more people? I mean, there's Selena and there's few others, but I, I understand there's not much uh, people in this area in the country. Is that correct? Uh, I think we have around 1,300 to 1,400 mental health professionals working with a population of uh, over 800,000. Right. There is a great need for more people to come into the mental health sector uh, to be educated around mental health and suicide prevention and get more young people to develop a spirit of volunteerism <laughs> to work for organizations without co-funding mm -hmm. and expect uh, somebody surviving another day as a payment. And one of the key things that affects people getting involved in this area is the stigma associated with it. Eh? Yes. How difficult is it to break that? The stigma begins with the way we speak. When we say commit suicide, we add stigma to suicide. People yeah. don't commit suicide, they kill themselves because of suicide. And the other thing is the traditional and cultural perspectives or opinions towards um, suicide and mental health difficulties. Eh? Mm -hmm. And it's really difficult. It ranges from uh, breaking um, traditional rules, um, witchcraft, and there's so many. But once we start the discussion, we start to change their mindsets a little at a time. And uh, 
Well, Rome wasn't built in a day, so we're taking those little baby steps. To start. Yep. Mm. Let's, so let's look at some of the factors that lead to, that contribute to mental health issues and suicide eh, attempts. Eh? One, uh, there's, there's a range of issues. Yep. Um, one, obviously, is relationship failure. Uh, and, you know, this often deals with strong emotional fe feelings. Eh? Uh, how much of these do you see uh, in this area? We have relationship problems, uh, rejection from families and intimate others. We have examination results, poor examination results, unrealistic expectations from communities and families, as well as uh, bullying in school violence on social media and in the community at the grassroots. Yeah. So th you know, these are real thi things that really can, can make someone start to think that way. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, so, for instance, something like um, how can, like, a person when they see some of like this, how can they step up and assist? Uh, or how can they notice the signs that you know someone is, you know, is there any way that you can be really look? I need this. Some this person needs help. Yeah. Uh, you know, most do do most of these people actually call themselves, or do some people actually call in? Hey, can you talk to my friend who's not feeling? We have, great shape. we have a lot of community sessions and a lot of trainings and awareness program, programs in the community. And we have our little lighthouses, our beacons of hope. And they act as our contact people. So they, there's a lot of referral. There's a lot of people who find out uh, through social media, through great shows such as this. They find out about social uh, youth champs for mental health. And they start messaging us or they call us in. Mm. And also we teach them on identifying if somebody is at risk using uh, ideations, whether they're thinking of killing themselves, if they withdraw, if their behavior has changed, if they started willing important things to their friends, valuable possessions, those little things that uh, yeah, are changing signs, behavior. Eh? Yeah. Threatening to hurt or kill the, uh, themselves, uh, increase excessive substance abuse, eh? alcohol and drugs. Eh? Um, substance abuse, uh, how bad is that in Fiji? Um, and how and the correlation with mental health issues uh, are you seeing that I'm not really sure of the extent of substance abuse yeah. but we get some cases uh, with young people using it excessively uh, mm. excessively and um, when some of our young people are going through suicidal ideations um, having alcohol or substance abuse problems uh, only accelerates the chances of them attempting mm. or completing right Maxine you uh, sa they sent this um, this this notes uh, on people who are threatening to hurt or kill themselves, increase or excessive substance abuse, people who start to have they have don't have a sense of purpose in life. Yeah, yeah that's one of the issues. Anxiety, ag agitation, uh, unable to sleep, feeling trapped like there's no way out, hopelessness about the future, withdrawing from friends. So there are signs that people can you can start to take notice eh? on some of these. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, feelings of uh, being trapped, feelings of uh, hopelessness, withdrawal, anger, recklessness, those are the little signs, eh? yeah. especially on social media, which is a problem because when somebody puts up a status, I'm thinking of killing myself, I've had enough of life. I've actually seen some of yeah. those, yeah. And a lot of people take it as a joke, and when it actually happens, we come up with, oh, I should have done something. So these are little cry for help that we must respond to immediately. Right. And a lot of these uh, victims or attempted ones, they're, they're between as from what I'm seeing is between the ages of 17 to 25. Yes. Is that correct? So yeah. what, are the, what is particular about the characteristic of this age group that makes them uh, vulnerable? It's because of the unrealistic expectations, examinations, the need to is belong. It's a very vulnerable age. Yeah. Eh? And the need to belong to a group of people. Um, so some of them are rejected, some of them are sex workers, some of them, they come from all different backgrounds and they're looking for a sense of belonging and acceptance. And if we don't, they don't uh, have an environment that's enabling, they tend to look for other options. All right. You're watching For the Record. We're discussing the issue of mental health and suicide prevention. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. Now, uh, Lionel, if we can just... We, we talked about some of the contributing factors, eh? but can we now discuss some of the key things that can be done to help prevent suicide amongst young people? Uh, there needs to be more awareness at home, in the community and in the schools. Mental health needs to be a priority in mm. the what school. What kind of awareness? What, what people need to be aware of? Understanding the signs, understanding right. how to give basic support. Um, knowing the services that are readily available free of charge in the communities that they're in. 
because it's not always that the, the Ministry of Health serve all the communities, but we have different key people that's in these organizations that could offer the support. And talking, talking about your problems. Communication is, is a key issue here. Yeah, and knowing that it's okay to not feel okay sometimes. It's all part of being human. And during uh, difficult situations, there's always someone that you can talk to. Right. And um, so the environment at home and at school is important. Uh, and communicating, uh, avoiding neglect and things, or letting people be alone. Eh? That's yeah. a very important part. Eh? Uh, let's talk about some of the activities you've been undertaking. Like, what are some of the issues? You talk about raising awareness and some of the work that you do. What are some of the stuff that uh, Youth Chamber for Mental Health uh, do, Maxine? One of our imp uh, most uh, important activities that Youth Chamber partake in is the uh, high schools outreach in which we go out to schools uh, sh sharing the messages of hope and using a creative art exp expression uh, that is uh, in a form of a play or poetry and just sharing that messages of hope on how to build young people to be resilient, on how we can help uh, young people that are going through stresses, how we can have that um, support from uh, organizations as well. And so school is a key area that you've, uh, you've been targeting. How are you seeing the response from the students in, in this area? Uh, because uh, you know, a lot of time people don't want to show that they're weak or that yeah. they're going through something or they have a situation at home, they like to keep things to yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. How are you finding this outreach in the schools? Through evaluation, speaking with the teachers and the students, uh, they uh, have identified that it is a real problem and some of them are facing it. And in very few schools, students stand up and share their problems. But it's not encouraged because the bullying may start. We have our safety plan where we get them to like our page on Facebook, follow the social media platform, and then we start talking to them because it uh, provides for a safe space. Mm -hmm. But apart from the schools, we do also national trainings for peer educators in uh, knowing mental health strategies to use. Uh, we also train, uh, we do sessions for clinicians in understanding how to work with young people. We do it with religious groups, creating awareness with them. And also we're about to embark on our uh, our gender research project in schools on uh, bullying in schools. Eh? Mm. And so it's the first research, I believe, of its kind. And it's funded by Gleason in the U.S. Okay, so you, you also mentioned that you go to villages. Yes. Yeah. What's the reaction like uh, in a village when you talk about the issue of uh, mental health and suicide prevention? It's normally the same in every co community. When we talk about mental health, uh, words that come up are lelia, uluka, pagala. These are the yeah. words that are com uh, frequently used. Uh, and then when we start to, we use a very calm approach in understanding that these stereotypical, th stereotypical thinking and opinions were passed down from generations. Uh, and it's hard to change, but when we start creating awareness around mental health and the importance in the community, it starts to change the way they change think and they... So one of your key challenges is, is in, in raising awareness, is just uh, the stigma that's associated with it. Yeah. Uh, and you've had people uh, standing on the streets recently um, uh, uh, with duct tapes over their mouths. Uh, and I'll play soon a video, uh, one of your videos of uh, the kind of messages that you put on it. If we could uh, watch that video now.
So what are the messages you're trying to depict there with, uh, with people having the duct taped over their mouth? The messages we're trying to depict is that there's always hope that uh, you can always reach out. You want to share some of the messages that you had this year? Mm. Yeah. I think for this year, what we, with our Silencing Stigma Street Advocacy Campaign, what we try and do is try and create a visibility around uh, the human, right abu human rights uh, abuses, human yeah. rights violation rather, ha the human rights violation towards people living with mental health difficulties, towards people living on the streets, or people living with uh, mental health difficulties mm -hmm. or mental illness. So what we try and do is try and uh, create that uh, space for young, for people living with mental health difficulties uh, and also for our volunteers to feel what it feels like for for those on the streets for 24 hours at yeah. least. Who are wanting to say something but are not able to. Huh? Yes. How, so how effective would you would an, uh, an activity like this be? You know, is it effective or it's, are you just getting publicity and uh, you know, invisibility? Yeah? Publicity is very important, right. but also um, it's very effective in the sense that... Uh, what is your message getting across? Yeah, more young people. We have rovers walking around the side, apart from those that are sitting on the ground, and we have people coming to them and asking them for support. Mm. And after the campaign, we have different youth groups coming to us and saying, we heard about your campaign, what can we do to help, or how you can come and do sessions for us. Mm. And uh, it's very effective, because like Maxine had said also, it's giving our advocates um, an experience of what these people go through. And they go through it all their life. We experience it only for 24 hours. Eh? So it builds them up, builds their motivation as well. You mentioned earlier about peer support. Eh? Yeah. How important is peer support? And why, you know, you I can mm -hmm. see that you're investing a lot and putting a lot of uh, effort into peer educators and, and, and training these people. Eh? Yeah. How important is peer support? Peer support is very important. Young people respond to people, or their peers, and uh, we understand each other. We go through similar issues. We're in the same generation. And um, it allows for that very informal talent or session where they can talk about things that they're going through. We feel more comfortable. Yes. Mm. You're watching For The Record. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back to For The Record. Now, uh, w let's talk about the resources that's available nationally in the country. Mm -hmm. We have one main mental health institution in yep. the country. Uh, there really isn't much services out there. Would that be correct? There is uh, f a fair amount, fair but amount. we're hoping for more. For more, obviously, yeah. yeah. So for people living outside of Suva, for instance, or in rural areas, you know, what more can be done in this area? Uh, and where can people really go? Um, the government has been very instrumental in decentralizing the services to the... They've been trying, eh? Yeah. They've, they have decentralized the services into the stress wards, and the community health workers mm -hmm. have been trained in mental health gap. But we also so have... So just tell me about the stress wards. They exist in every hospital? The three divisional hospitals. The three divisional hospitals, yes. hospitals yeah. And then we have the community health workers in the subdivision at subdivisional level. But then also we have Empower Pacific... So what can they do there? What's, what, uh, what can be done at the stress wards? Uh, what kind of services is provided? At the stress wards they have uh, mental health professionals such as counsellors, uh, uh, clinicians who are working in mental health, they have orderlies who help them, who give them a space where they're seen and medication can be given to them. Right. So it's a place where they can go in the hospital. So it's a start of where we can... Yes. You know, so what, what's some of the things more that you, you'd like to see done? We would like more mental health professionals distributed evenly, not only to the subdivisional levels, but also to the maritime areas. And we feel that they're left out many times. Eh? So more mental health professionals in, uh, in Fiji. It'll be a big help in sort of identifying the problem yeah. and addressing the problem at the point. Eh? Yeah. Uh, what other so support groups are out there, like from the NGO side, that apart from, apart from youth children for mental health? There's Empower Pacific and Lifeline Fiji who offer um, counseling yeah. and uh, Lifeline Fiji has their telephone line, 132454. There's Medical Services Pacific, there's Fiji Alliance for Mental Health, an organization that offers training and awareness. Um, and there's several other, there's PCP, there's several other little organizations that help with uh, building awareness and education. Yeah, I, I saw Lifeline Fiji's toll-free helpline. Yeah. Um, in from January to June this year, received 2,900 calls, almost 3,000 calls, yeah. where 40% were at high risk of suicide and 5% had made plans for suicide. 
but decided to make one last call for help. Eh? Yeah. So uh, are you surprised by these numbers? Um, not actually, because we've, working, we've been working in the field for a while, but mm. I guess for the public it'll be shocking because the numbers are increasing mm. rapidly. Eh? And uh, yeah, Lifeline's done an amazing job at uh, having this um, call center. You make this statement, and I'd like to read out, and you can tell me what you tried to say, because I thought it was a good statement. You said, we need to encourage young people to access services readily available. We need to change the mindset of Fijians so that we can make a difference in the communities that we are working. How important is changing the mindset? It's very important because it starts from home, the way we think and the way we feel and the way we act towards our children. And children develop, develop their resilience from home first and foremost. Traditional perspectives and opinions, that's going to take a while. Mm. And we talked about media sensitization. We talk about youths accessing the services that are readily available because it is very important. Right. We, this is one of the other statistics that I'd like to put out, I'd like to put out because I just want to show the magnitude of the issues that we're dealing with. In 2016, 10, ten children took their own lives, 14 attempted. Eh? In 2015, 15 child suicides. Uh, in 2013, 13 child suicides. And as of April uh, this year, one child suicide case, one attempt has already been reported. But as you mentioned, there's plenty others that are not yeah, uh, being reported cases. out there. So uh, it is uh, a critical issue. And you, we all know in a few months' time, Many young people will go through one of the most uh, stressful moments of their young lives, yep. sitting for the exams. Eh? What would be your advice to them you know, to help them through something like this? So how can people uh, prepare them so that they are in the right frame of mind? I guess it's very important to know that every child is not going to become a mathematician or a scientist. Mm. So uh, expectations. Uh, yes, unrealistic expectations. And uh, for children to know that the best thing about being a human being is that we can make mistakes, grow from them, and try again. And also to know that you're not alone if you're going through a situation you know, with your family or your parents and you want to get away from it and talk to someone, there are services that's readily available. Right. And uh, so they got the help line, lifeline. Yeah. They, uh, what did some of the things that they can do? With Lifeline Fiji? Lifeline Fiji that they can call. Yeah. And then they on Facebook they have uh, um, your Facebook Our pages. Profile. Yeah, yeah, profile pages so that they can get... So there's services in every avenue that young people can access. Yes. Uh, and from the government side, what are some of the areas that they can access? Through the government, they can speak to the health centers in their area or the hospitals. If they're lucky, they can speak to a mental health professional there. Uh, they can go down to social welfare. There are child counselors at social welfare. Um, there's many different sectors. The Ministry of Education provides counselors in schools. Um, there are teachers who are trained to be counselors as well. They just need to reach out and try and make sure that they know about these services. And if they know the signs of suicide, they will be able to identify someone quickly, have a safety plan, and reach out. All right, reach out. You're watching For the Record. Be back after the break. Welcome back to For the Record. Now, we talked uh, about youth terms for mental health is available, we don't, but how can more safe spaces? Uh, be created for young people? Safe spaces can be created for young people by um, organizations uh, reaching out and allowing us to use their conference rooms, <laughs> use their little places, because sometimes we offer awareness on the streets and in the parks, and we need uh, organizations to create rooms or little spaces that's safe, that's confidential, and that allows a young person to express themselves. Right. At schools, can they also create some yeah. of these uh, these areas? Or what are some of the things that, say, schools can do? Schools, uh, with schools, they have their counselors and they have their uh, family life teachers. They have some their, have their principals. And yeah. yeah, and uh, they they have a selection of people that they can go to and trust. Eh? And if they fo even form a group that they feel safe talking to, that'll be really good. All right. So we all know that ideally, the safest space for any young person or child is in their home, eh? uh, with their own families. Eh? Yeah. So how can this be strengthened in the role of parents in all this? The role of parents? I think what most parents need to be, uh, what most parents need to be doing is have that, um, that um, space where they can accept their children. Um, as Lionel have mentioned, not everyone will become a mathematician or... or accept them for yeah. who they are. Right? Acceptance for who they are and acceptance for whatever achievement that they that they um, have um, for them to be grateful for that little achievements that mm -hmm. their children uh, 
Have you? And if I might add, you know, in sporting tournaments, when children come back from school, the first thing we ask is, uh, did you win? Mm. We need to change that and say, did you enjoy sports today? Those okay. little things in the way we so talk. So it's the way we uh, engage eh? yes. in uh, giving them the confidence and yeah. celebrating their participation or their activities. Eh? Because, you know, often when these things happen, when there's a suicide, there's an attempt suicide, the blame game begins. Eh? Yes. Mm. Who, uh, the parent is not doing things. Eh? What, what should actually be the way to handle something like this when, if it has happened? Uh, the family of the victim needs to go for counseling so that there's no prejudice towards the other children that's still alive. Mm. Uh, we all make mistakes and sometimes that's a learning curve for us. But let's not uh, let this young person be just the statistics. Let's continue learning from that experience and moving on and growing communities that are resilient. Right. I'll just come back to, to government and um, the engagements you've been having. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, what collaboration are you doing with government in terms of pushing these messages and this awareness forward? Eh? We work with Ministry of Health and Medical Services um, and f Ministry of Youth and Sports in organizing a national training of the trainer every year. It's been happening for the last five years. And we take 30 youth leaders from around the country away for, uh, for a week. This is with the government? With the government mm. in training them. And also Ministry of Health and Medical Services funds our um, community awareness programs and our national schools visit to the three divisions. Okay. And they've been instrumental in pushing the program and forward. And would there still be some policies that you'd like to see strengthened, some, uh, some, some projects that you think government can take on and uh, do much better at? Um, with the policies, Youth Champs of Mental Health is involved with the Ministry of Youth and Sports um, Policy Review Group and with Ministry of Health Social Prevention Policy. Given that it, uh, it, um, it's a bigger death toll than yeah. road accidents, would you like to see more resources, for instance, in the budget? this of course yeah. <laughs> we would like the budget to increase yeah towards the mental health sector because of the, the toll that it's taking on, yes. on the public eh? so uh, world suicide prevention day will be celebrated September 10th about two weeks from now yeah uh, this year uh, two to three weeks uh, well you know what preparations are being made to create more awareness around this day or the themes um, we're working with the Ministry. I believe the Ministry of Health and Medical Services is planning a community um, activity, which we will support. But apart from that, we have ongoing support throughout the year. Okay. Very quickly, we've got 30 seconds for both of you. The message, final message to the public that's watching out there, facing mental health issues, experiencing feelings of hopelessness, what would you like to see? That there's always hope and uh, reach out. Mm. Next scene. Talk to someone. A problem shared is a problem heart. Thank you very much, uh, Lionel and Maxine. Thank you for joining me on For the Record for the Evening. Thank you, Stanley. Funaka. That was For the Record for the Evening. We hope you enjoyed the show and will join us again next Sunday. Okay. From the team and I, good night. Mm -hmm.